Joining us now, Julian Emanuel, Evercore ISI, Chief Equity and Quantitative Strategist. Diane Swank was saying no, but she was still pessimistic. Is this the price spiral? It, it, it isn't. It, it okay. simply is not. Look, when you think about it, going back to 2020 and 2021, the amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus put into the system was four or five times greater than we'd ever seen, including the financial crisis, going back to World War I, really. And when you think about that and the length of time it takes to unwind that, we shouldn't be surprised that there are still pockets of the economy 18 months later that are experiencing upward pressure strains. Think about break-evens. Think about inflation expectations. Think about that soundbite that Rick just said. If interest rate volatility does, in fact, come in, all of that's telling you this is not a wage price spiral. This is not the 1970s. Julian, good morning. It's Guy. The labour market is tight. Um, companies are still struggling in certain areas to hire the people they want. We are therefore seeing wages going up. Who has the power here? Is it labour or is it capital? So this is one of the difficulties of the last year or two, aside from the fact that, you know, we're shifting to a Fed who has taken away the idea of free money, in our view, in likely, uh, you know, for the long term, uh, the 40-year relationship of capital and labor is shifting. Capital had the advantage for those 40 years, going back to the early 1980s, when inflation was in fact broken. It's not an easy process. We don't want to say that labor is going to go into the driver's seat, because that's not the way sort of the jump function the economy works. There's a greater balance now, which I think, if you think about what Chair Powell is saying, what you know, uh, corporate America is saying and what uh, politicians are saying, that's not necessarily a bad thing in the long run. So. How do you invest? I know it's a really silly question, but volatility doesn't really seem to be going anywhere unless it's the VIX, which is like somehow below 20. Uh, what do you do in this kind of environment? So you really need to be careful. It's one of those things where, and again, this is the type of things bear markets do uh, make you sort of become too emotional. You need to check your emotions and you need to think long term. You know, the fact is, is that when markets go down, that sort of forces you in, into thinking long term. But the truth is, is that if you look at the last 20 to 30 years, you have been paid for buying the dips every time. Those dips before inflation perked up a year and a half ago, we're down 10 to down 15%. This is a new environment. These dips are now down 20 to down 25%. So you look at your portfolio and you say, can I see myself as a buyer if we retest the lows from October, which we think likely we will sometime in the next six to 12 months because no bear market has ever bottomed before the start of a recession. And if you can't see yourself as a buyer down there and then incrementally yep. down 10% from there, because dips, you know, we still believe in stocks for the long run, you have to think about discipline. You also, for in our, our view, have to tilt towards value. That's a long run concept. Okay, Julian, does that mean that we are no longer in an environment of lower lows? Uh, no, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that at all. Again, going back to this idea that if we're going to get a recession and, and part of the confusion and part of the whipsaw of the last three days specifically is the fact that uh, away from the labor market, when you think about housing, when you think about freight rates, when you think about actually something uh, that we thought was very strong, like rents, all of these things that went parabolic are now starting to turn over. You see the PMIs turning over, 40 handle readings, mm -hmm. in some cases into the 30s. We're likely going to have a recession, and again, if yeah. we are going to have a recession, there is likely going to be a lower low on at least one of the headline indices. So if you like value, does that mean you have to buy Europe? It actually does. Uh, and again, it's the, the hold your nose, it hasn't worked in a decade uh, type of trade. And obviously, look, if I had told you a, a few weeks ago, given everything that's gone on in Europe, uh, you know, obviously the hostilities with regarding Russia, the plunge through parity, uh, the crisis in London, the existential crisis in Zurich, that European financials were among the best performing sectors globally this year, still down, mind you. 
it, it tells you everything you need to know. The move away from negative interest rates is a psychological sea change that makes a place that tilts towards value like Europe uh, more attractive in terms of a portfolio allocation.